Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to this uh, Tuesday afternoon session for the Wales Biodiversity Partnership Conference. Um, if you were at the last sessions, you'll already have had some fascinating talks. If not, then welcome. Um, this afternoon's session is all about tracking biodiversity, uh, dissolution and trends. Um, there is a chat facility that you'll notice on your screen there. If you have any questions for the presenters, you um, type them in the chat facility as we go, and uh, we'll try and pick up as many of those as we can uh, to the presenters after the presentations. We've got two presentations back to back, then there'll be a question and answer session. But uh, type your questions now, and we'll pick them up uh, a little bit later. Uh, if you revisit the main platform website, there's the facility to um, provide feedback on these sessions, and that would be really appreciated by the organisers. If you can do that, please. Uh, and to remind you that the sessions are being, organ uh, being recorded. Um, if you're socially minded, then at six o'clock uh, this evening, there is a social networking quiz and details of that once again on the main platform website. So uh, without further ado, then we'll uh, stop listening to me and start listening to something far more interesting, which will be uh, Simon Smart. Over to you, Simon. Hi, thanks, Ant, and uh, good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for inviting me to take part in the conference. So I'm going to talk about um, a roadmap for a new indicator for the status of biological diversity in Wales. Um, this is uh, specified under the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act, which you'll all be very familiar with. And the, the Act sets out a number of wellbeing goals, and progress towards these is going to be measured by a, a large number of indicators. And biodiversity of species and habitats can be seen to contribute to these goals in a, in a number of ways that justify inclusion in the, in the indicator set. So focusing on, in no particular order, a prosperous Wales, well, we can probably fairly assume that the experience of visitors to Wales is enhanced by healthy and characteristically diverse habitats. And we know there are many visitors contributing much to the Welsh economy. Welsh Gov figures tell us, for example, that in 2018, 6.3 billion was spent on tourism, while around 9.5% 9, 9 of the Welsh workforce are employed in tourism in some form. And also it's been estimated just recently that uh, in the first year of the Wales Coast Path, around 32 million has been estimated to have been spent in local economies. So um, the role of biodiversity, uh, although not absolutely strongly evidenced, is, is, is likely to play a major role in the, the ongoing prosperity of Wales. Uh, if we turn to the globally responsible um, aspect, then I mean we know that Wales does have international responsibilities for conservation of rare habitats and species and just as one example if we look at the Welsh red list for plants it tells us that 44 plant species in Wales represent 25% or more of the global population. So global responsibilities there uh, to biodiversity. And then the other interesting one uh, also is, is a resilient Wales um, and this, this is interesting. There's a goal relating to resilience and resilience, how would we, do we define that? Well, the ability of a system to withstand or recover from a shock, but as well as social and economic resilience, we also want our ecosystems to be resilient. And this is, of course, reflected in the resilience duty in the Environment Act. And species diversity is one of the four ecosystem components that have been recognized as important in building and maintaining resilience. Uh, another of these components is the extent of our ecosystems across Wales. And a method and indicator already exists for this, is shown here on the left, developed by NRW. But what we really need um, is an indicator of species diversity to go alongside, and that's what I'm going to be describing in the talk today. So over the last year, ideas have been coalescing, really, as a result of some interesting and productive discussion with Welsh government stakeholders, uh, and we now have an agreed plan for developing the first outputs from a new Indicator 44 starting in early next year. The first phase of the work will, will focus on producing species trends for Section 7 species in Wales, uh, and then combining them, these into a presentation and summary that may look like the existing C4B indicator, for example, already published by JNCC for the UK and, and shown here in this, in this slide. This is because the same state-of-the-art modelling methods will be applied by the same team drawing on experts from the UKCH Biological Record Centre and, and perhaps recognising the benefits of consistency of, of presentation. 
uh, given that we're producing the same kind of analytical outputs. Um, these modeling methods are well tested, they're thoroughly peer reviewed and provide assurance that good statistical practice will be applied. And, and also in terms of fostering clarity and understanding, it's also important obviously to be able to dis disaggregate the indicators so that the contribution of different species groups to the combined trend can be seen. So there's, a, there's an example here, if you, if you look at the shape of the combined indicator at the bottom right, it can be understood as a combination of the species group specific trends as shown in the four graphs on the on the left. And some of these trends are quite different, notably, for example, the recovery of some groups of bryophytes and lichens, to some extent possibly driven by recovery from high historic levels of sulfur deposition. But the approach we're taking, and this is why I need to be really clear that this is charting new ground, is really to, to recognize the need for a specifically Welsh indicator that showcases Welsh biodiversity. And really the most effective strategy for ensuring that is not only to use state-of-the-art modeling methods for, for including as many species as possible, but indeed to use as much high-quality data from within Wales as possible. This is where the Wales uh, Local Environment Record Centres come into the picture. And this is the, the, the real innovation and strength of what we're proposing to do. So. The previously published priority species indicator for Wales was quite heavily biased towards particular species groups. 32 out of the 39 total species were, were moths. Um, the RSPB State of Nature report in 2016 analysed a much greater number of species within Wales. But while the LERCs contributed to this effort, no new analyses were undertaken to really explore the possible benefits of including the additional volumes of data that they held. So we were charged under the, the eRAMP project to carry out a review in 2019 that, that actually carried out just those investigations. It, it set out to measure the contribution that LERC records within Wales could make to trends modelling. And we did this for all species and separately for Section 7 species. So basically in a nutshell we found that a 267% increase in the number of species could be modelled if we combine records from the national recording schemes that underpin uh, the existing C4B type indicators and the Wales LERC uh, data sets. We didn't know this to start with. I mean, this this was this was a completely new finding, and and and, it, and it's greatly encouraging in terms of what we can do in terms of showcasing a much range of number of species going forward. So the gain in species coverage, just to show you, just to try and explain these curious looking grass is shown here. So we have um, blue bars um, uh, uh, that show the percentage of section 7 species that could be modelled uh, showing a clear increase on the right hand graph, so much more blue. And this is where records from both sources, the Wales LERCs and the national recording schemes entered the modelling workflow. So contrast that with the greater no amount of red on the, the left, which is showing far fewer species that could be modelled based on just the natural national recording scheme data. But a part of this part as part of the review, we didn't go on to produce model trends. Uh, this is the and this is the activity we plan to undertake starting in early 2021 to actually produce the new indicator 44. So the, the benefits of including the LERC data are pretty clear. The principal one being better, more accurate evidence of how Welsh section 7 species are changing over time across Wales. So the inclusion of LERC data should improve the accuracy of trends for species already modelled, while also adding in significant numbers of new species. Um, inclusion of the LERC data is also happens to be consistent with a number of national policy objectives. And I think it, it, also, it also perhaps puts in place a process that, that nicely links up with the LERC bringing in benefits in terms of future engagement with the public and naturalists of varying expertise, for example, publishing under, publicizing under-recorded groups and directing effort to under-recorded areas. And that's not to say the LERCs don't do this already, they do, but this would, this would actually sort of engage much more um, or connect that activity to the, to, the, uh, to the indicator going forward. But that does raise certain issues. Um, you know, this kind of feedback that we're, we're envisaging means that uh, you know, we have to very carefully track how changes in the indicator itself might then influence capture of new records which could potentially influence the indicator. 
quite an interesting uh, uh, challenge to, to track that. But in this respect, we hope that this will be the start of a relationship that really brings together the best quality and quantity of data, experience of recording practices in Wales, and an established internationally recognised expertise in indicator development and trends modelling. And the experience of the LERC and the network of recorders will also help identify any species group specific variation and bias in the contribution contributing data. The other issues that need to be considered are ensuring consistency with UK reporting going forwards and the impact of potentially large differences that we're envisaging could occur in the quantity of records and species groups included in the new indicator relative to, to the UK indicator. So uh, our plan starting in early 2021 is to basically reconnect the Wales LERC database to the workflow. Um, so I've just skipped a slide there to the workflow uh, used to ingest and process data in the 2019 review. Something's happening with my slides. Sorry about that. It's we will then move forward with trends modeling for the section seven species that meet criteria for inclusion. Um, and that will be based on best current practice for estimating trends from opportunistic biological records. And the, the key innovation here that many of you will be familiar with is, is the idea of actually modeling the detection process in a way that accounts for um, variation in recorder effort that we know goes on in space and, and, and over time and reflects variation in, in uh, the expertise of the different recorders and their, their efforts on, on different sites. So the idea is that this introduces an adjustment for varying recorder effort, which is, is critical. We want to try and estimate the true presence of the species and how that changes over time. So species distribution is really just one facet of species diversity. Uh, another is abundance. Um, that is counts of individuals as an estimate of population size, for example. And the contribution of both abundance and distribution is, is recognized, for example, in the UK level indicators, where the data underpinning each indicator generally originate from different recording programs. So for Wales, published trends for butterflies, birds and bats come from structured recording schemes for those groups for abundance. And of course, these results tell us something potentially slightly different and useful about biodiversity change and the potential drivers of change in population sizes. Messages that may not be so evident um, uh, from the distributional data, yet the distributional data can convey change among a larger range of groups some of which may actually be at their range edge in Wales. So in essence, in essence distribution and abundance tell us different useful and complementary things about biodiversity change. So we will need to take account of the abundance based trends when publishing the indicator 44 and the aim is to produce a summary but probably with signposting to the places where the abundance based trends can be found and so avoiding duplicating effort. Another part of our agree work program will be to scope the possibility of a widespread species indicator for Wales, again using Wales, LERC data and recording schemes da data sets to model trends, but this time in, a, in more common species, more frequent species. Uh, achieving this would bring consistency with some similar work going on in Scotland and England uh, with the, the English example shown here, an interim indicator just shown here. Uh, and this is based on an example of what can be achieved with the abundance data from the structured recording schemes. So we've got the, the right people working on this. Um, BRC colleagues uh, are working on developing the widespread species indicator for Scotland and England. So it's perfect for achieving some alignment and applying the same kind of consistent methodologies to, to Wales. Um, the other benefit really of looking at widespread species is obviously that they you know, can carry the signal of different driving forces at work across the countryside. And it includes a range of species that perhaps matter to people in different ways and contribute to a variety of other ecosystem functions and services. And so in some respects, the ongoing process of perhaps revising the section seven lists may also be nicely timed if this can feed in candidate species and species groups for possible modeling in further future phases of the the indicator 44 development work. So just to summarize briefly then, we've, we have agreement to, to proceed with a, a plan of work to initially develop a trends indicator based on section seven species. And in doing so, we'll, we'll be sure to take account of existing results from the abundance based schemes. 
And uh, one thing I haven't mentioned actually yet is a, a final but no less important challenge is to consider how these approaches might actually be extended to the marine domain. So, so that's really to wrap things up. We're going to be busy in 2021 and really look forward to developing the new indicator 44. So please watch out for that as it develops. Um, and just lastly, say thanks. A lot of people have worked on, on this. Um, so acknowledgements to Welsh Government, uh, lots of people who were on the NRAP implementation of the group and also um, my colleagues in, in BRC at Wallingford. Um, and that's uh, that's all. Thank you very much.